Father and our God, we want to thank you this evening. We want to glorify your name because in all the earth, there is none that looks like you. There is none that compares to you. There is none that do the things you can do. There is none that say the things you can say. Lord, we thank you this evening. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, because you've gathered us together in peace to receive your word. We pray, Lord, this night, but your word will prevail over our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. First of all, I would like to give honor to the almighty God for the privilege he has given me to stand before you and bring the word of God to you. Equally, I also want to thank our parents in the Lord, Daddy and Mommy Gio, for this opportunity that they gave me, this is a lifetime opportunity. I promise you I won't mess this up. I thank you and may the cruise of your oil ever remain fresh in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that in the end, Daddy, you will make heaven. Mommy, you will make heaven in the name of Jesus. And all the great men of God who have shepherded us over the years, who are holding the hands of our parents in the Lord in this ministry, may the Lord continue to strengthen you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let somebody shout hallelujah. If you came here tonight to meet with Jesus, I would like you to look at your neighbor and say, by the time we are through today, Jesus would have transformed my life so much that you will not even recognize me. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. I'd like to appreciate the speaker who spoke before me. I pray that the unction of God will continue to remain fresh upon your life in Jesus' name. The theme of this Holy Ghost service today, for this month, says Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. In the light of that, I bring you word on what I title tonight, the revelation of Jesus. What is a revelation, quickly? A revelation is the act of making something hidden known. It is God's supernatural disclosure of truth to men who otherwise could not have known such truth on their own. And that leads me to my Bible test this evening, the book of Matthew chapter number 1 and verse 20 to 21. Matthew chapter 1 verse 20 to 21. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. When we talk about the revelation of Jesus, we are talking about revealing the person, the character, and the mission of Jesus Christ. Jesus threw a question and said, who do men say I am? Many have tried to answer this question across history. Some say he's just one of the prophets. Others say he's just an ordinary messenger. The only person who can answer this question accurately is Jesus Christ himself. Because no man can describe another person better than the way he would describe himself. So what does Jesus say he is? Or who does Jesus say he is? In the Gospel of John, a very important phrase Jesus engaged over and over again is the phrase, in quotes, I am. In this repetition of the quote, I am, we see Jesus revealing himself to us over and over again. In that Gospel of John, Jesus made seven powerful revelations of himself that we can't just ignore 
if we really want to know who Jesus is. The first revelation Jesus made about himself in the I am revelation was that I am the bread of life. According to the gospel of John chapter 6 and verse 35, John chapter 6 and verse 35, Jesus reveals himself. He said, I am the bread of life. Bread literally is food and food is the source of energy and sustainers. Therefore, Jesus, the bread of life, is the energy that drives all of existence. And also, hallelujah, and also, he is the source of our sustenance. That's what he means. And I pray for someone here today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the time this meeting is over, no man will be able to take glory for your sustenance. In the name of Jesus. Jesus as the bread of life is the all-round balanced diet that makes for wholesome living. He satisfies physically. He satisfies financially. He satisfies maritally. He satisfies all way around. In Matthew chapter 14, and verse 15 to 21, Matthew chapter 14, verse 15 to 21, Jesus, the bread of life, touched the bread of man, and the result was explosive abundance. I pray for you today. The source of income that puts bread on your table, Jesus will touch it tonight. I said Jesus will touch it tonight. If you believe, shout Jesus. The second revelation Jesus gave him of himself is that I am the light of the world. That's how he described himself. In John chapter 8 and verse 12, John chapter 8 and verse 12, he said, I am the light of the world. Whosoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Light is the natural predator of darkness. When light comes, it exposes and cancels the hidden works of darkness. When you encounter Jesus, the light of the world, the stronghold of darkness over any aspect of your life becomes history. And now I'm praying for someone here today. As you encounter Jesus in this service tonight, every stronghold of darkness in your life, every stronghold of darkness in your marriage, every stronghold of darkness in your finances, they are giving way in the name of Jesus. Jesus said in John, that the episode of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8b, 1 John chapter 3 verse 8b, he said, for this cause, the scripture says, was the Son of Man made manifest, that he might destroy the works of darkness. I want to quickly reveal to you two important natures of light. Number one, light travels on a straight line. What does that mean? It means that Jesus is straightforward. There is no deception in his character at all. There is, no, there is no falsehood in his personality. The second thing you should know is that light is very fast. Up to now, there is nothing in the universe that can beat the speed of light. What does that mean? It means when you encounter Jesus, your delays are turned to speed. I pray for someone here today. Every delay in your life, every stagnation in your life, as you encounter Jesus tonight, Jesus is giving you the light of speed. The third thing Jesus reveals about himself, he said, I am the door. John chapter 10 verse 9. A door is the access point to an important place or person. When Jesus said, I am the door, he's telling you that he is the access door to salvation and satisfaction. John chapter 10 and verse 9, John 10, 9. He said, I am the door. By me, if any man comes in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. I pray for you in the name that is above every other name. Every door of opportunity that has been locked against you. Every door of opportunity that has been locked against your family. Jesus, the door, is breaking such doors open in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus as the door provides 1,000% security. One thing no man can promise you is security. Not even the best leaders of the world. When there is evil ravaging outside, Jesus the door shuts it out so that it cannot get to us. And when there is evil inside, Jesus becomes our door of escape. I pray for you. Every trap of the enemy in your life, every arrow of danger the enemy has fired into your life, Jesus, the door, is making a way of escape for you. The fourth thing Jesus reveals about himself, he said, I am the good shepherd. In John chapter 10, verse 11, John 10, 11, who is a good shepherd? A good shepherd is one who nurtures, is one who guides, is one who protects, secures, and guards, is one who provides leadership from the front, is one who provides direction. What does this mean for you and I? What is our advantage here? It means you can't be malnourished under his nurture. You can't be confused under his guide. You can't be victimized under his protection. You can't be lost under his leadership. You can't make mistakes when he directs you. I pray for someone here tonight. As you encounter Jesus, the good shepherd, from henceforth, your life will begin to have a sense of direction. The fifth thing Jesus reveals about himself is that I am the resurrection and the life. John chapter 11 verse 25, John 11 25. Resurrection, therefore, is not just an event, it's a person. Life is not just an event, it's a person. He clearly demonstrated this in Luke chapter 7 verse 11 to 15. Luke chapter 7 verse 11 to 15. The widow of Nain was going to the uh, graveyard to bury her only son. But guess what? She met the resurrection and the life on the way. I pray for 10,000 people under the sound of my voice. That thing you are about to bury, that your marriage you are about to bury, that your finances you are about to bury, that your career you are about to bury, you will meet Jesus, the resurrection and the life on the way. In John chapter 5 and verse 25, he said, The hour cometh, John 5 25, the hour cometh and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that shall hear shall live. I pray for 20,000 people under the sound of my voice. Everything that has died in your life, every good thing that has died in your marriage, every good thing that has died in your finances, every good thing that has died in your academics, that thing will hear the voice of Jesus tonight. And it shall come back to life in the name of Jesus. The sixth thing Jesus reveals about himself. There are three revelations in one. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. According to the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6. In this revelation, we understand that any way that is not Jesus, the way, will lead to certain destruction. Proverbs 14, verse 12. Proverbs 14, verse 12. Says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end is destruction. Unfortunately, many Christians have embraced religious syncretism. They now believe that it doesn't matter what religion you belong to, we serve the same God. That is a big lie from a small devil. That is a big lie from a small devil. It can't be true. Because this is clearly stated in scripture. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. Jesus is the only authorized channel to assessing God the Father. The only authorized channel. The Bible records in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, Acts 4, 12. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven amongst men whereby we shall be saved. Jesus as the truth is our reference point to detecting and correcting every falsehood of men and Satan, which tends to mislead people into error. In the truth, there is no shame. In the truth, there is no fear. In the truth, there is no bondage. According to the book of John chapter 8 and verse 32, I pray for you. 
as you encounter Jesus, the truth today, every lie of the devil, that lie that said you can't conceive, that lie that said you can't get healed, that lie that said you can't make progress, in the name of Jesus, those lies are uprooted in the name of Jesus. The seventh revelation Jesus made about himself, he said, I am the vine. Jesus powerfully declares this, that he is the vine. Jesus the vine is the source of life now and eternal. It is he who bears and carries us as branches. Everything about Jesus the vine and all connected to him the vine always bear fruit. They are fruitful. The vine is fruitful. It bears branches. The branches connected to the vine are fruitful. They bear fruits. Even the fruits connected to the branches connected to the vine, they are fruitful. That is why they bear seed. I tell you, any fruit that does not bear seed is unfruitful, even if it is called a fruit. The seeds in the fruit, they are not unfruitful either. They carry all the elements that are necessary to represent the vine to the next generation. And let me tell you this quickly. You know, many of us young ministers, we make the mistake. We always think it is about what we carry. Jesus has revealed to us that he is the vine and is the one carrying you. It is not about what you think you carry. It is about who is carrying you. Who is carrying you? Who is carrying you? I said, who is carrying you? <laughs> I pray for you tonight. The era of men carrying you is over. From today, it is Jesus himself that will carry you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. In Isaiah 46 and verse 4, in Isaiah 46 and verse 4, he said, And even to your old age, I am God, I am He. And even to your white hairs, I will carry you. He said, I have made you, and I will bear you, and I will carry you. I pray for you today. From henceforth, men can look, where your efforts fail to carry you, Jesus will carry you. Where your certificate fails to carry you, Jesus will carry you. Where your strength fails to carry you, Jesus will carry you. If you believe, shout Jesus. Now let me connect the dots as I round up. The revelation of Jesus is the pathway to salvation. The revelations Jesus made about himself, seven of them, when you connect them, you will discover that these seven revelations are connected to our salvation. Let me explain. He said, I am the bread of life. The bread of life here means the word of God. That is the first revelation of Jesus. Now, when, we be, when a man begins to intimate himself, with the word of God. What happens? It causes light to shine. That is the second revelation of Jesus. What happens when this light shines? This light shines and reveals a door. The third revelation of Jesus. What does this door do? It is through this door we assess the good shepherd. The fourth revelation of Jesus. What happens when we assess the good shepherd? He effects our resurrection from the grave of the Adamic nature and gives us life. That is the fifth revelation of Jesus. What happens after that? So that we can walk in his ways and be guided by his truth unto life. That is the sixth revelation of Jesus. To what end? To the end we might become established in the vine and bear fruits. If you believe in Jesus, I want you to shout Jesus. But I would like to bring something to your notice quickly as I drop the microphone in honor of the time given me. One of the revelations Jesus made of himself 
is that he is the light of the world. May I tell you this? Darkness is evidence that an object did not allow light to pass through it. Did you hear what I said? I said darkness is the evidence that an object did not allow light to pass through it. When you refuse to allow the light of Jesus pass through you, you are in darkness, you become colleagues. Because physics tells us when light is obstructed, shadow is formed. A shadow definitely will be formed. And shadow represents darkness. Therefore, as you've heard this word tonight, allow the light of God's word pass through you so that the oppressions of darkness can come to an end in your life. Therefore, when our Father and the Lord comes up tonight and he gives the altar call, don't sit down reluctantly. Be the first to stand at the foot of this altar and begin to plead for mercy. And I tell you the truth, Jesus made a powerful statement. Anyone that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Are you blessed tonight by the name of Jesus? Rise up to your feet, rise up to your feet, rise up to your feet. We are going to do something very quickly. We are going to shout the name of Jesus three powerful times. And I tell you, I promise you, standing on the altar of grace, every darkness in your life will give way as you shout this one. We are going to shout Jesus three times. Number one. Number two. Number three. God bless you mightily in Jesus' mighty name. If you are clapping to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, do we better? Do we better? Do we better? Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, it is getting better.